Hi, this is a prototype of the digitally controlled uh, stepped attenuator that I built. Um, it uses uh, a total of four sub-assemblies here. This is a Raspberry Pi, an old B model of mine. Uh, this is a SparkFun uh, rotary encoder. It's actually an RGB encoder, but I'm not lighting it up because I don't need uh, any, uh, any indication on it. Um, the particular circuit board is a breakout board that I uh, designed for it. Um, here is a vacuum fluorescent display. Um, I've got videos on both the uh, encoder and the VFD showing how to hook those up. Um, and then back here, this is the guts of the project. This is uh, um, from eBay. This is a PE4302 breakout board. And I'm just going to briefly demonstrate how this thing works. Um, I've got my frequency generator set here to uh, 1 megahertz. My oscilloscope is showing the waveform over there. Okay, so the, uh, the attenuation is currently set to uh, zero. Um, frequency generator is putting out four volts. The uh, oscilloscope is measuring uh, four volts. Now the eBay, uh, the eBay seller uh, claimed there was a 1.5 decibel insertion loss on this board. Um, apparently that doesn't happen at the zero step, but I think as we go in on some of the other steps, we'll start to see a little bit of, of loss. So anyway, the, the advantage of a stepped attenuator is you can precisely step it between uh, attenuation values. This uh, PE4302 chip has uh, 64 different steps. Uh, they go in a half decibel uh, per step. So it goes from zero to 31.5. So here we are at zero. Now if we go up to you know, as you see it going up, you see the amplitude of the waveform decrease. Six decibels should be around uh, around half or so. We've got uh, 1.84 volts peak to peak now. We go on up to uh, 12 decibels. Now at uh, 920 millivolts peak to peak. Yeah. Zoom in on the scope a bit. About 900 millivolts. Um, let's go up to 18 decibels. Um, 470 millivolts, peak to peak. Oops. Let's keep on going up. Go up to about uh, 24. Now we're showing a 230 millivolts peak to peak. And then we'll get up to the top of a 31 and a half. And we've got uh, 90 millivolts peak to peak. So my plan is to uh, throw this in a case and have myself a nice little uh, precision stepped attenuator. Here's a close up of the PE4302 board that came from eBay. The PE4302 is this uh, very tiny surface mount chip right there. Um, normally I would design my own board for something like this, but it really didn't look appealing to, uh, to have to try to solder that little devil. Um, so they put uh, uh, DC blocking capacitors on either side. Uh, I don't know what value those are. Um, over here is uh, what looks to be a bunch of power supply stuff. There's a 5 volt supply that this board runs off of and the chip is 3.3 volts. So this is, I think that's probably regulator, you know, and there's some, some filtering capacitors and that sort of thing. Um, there's some surface mount uh, resistors, you know, either pull-ups or some kind of resistors on this dip switch bank. Um, over here we have a header, there's a ground, plus uh, three I.O. pins. So the uh, the chip can be operated in either uh, parallel or serial mode. I believe what I figured out, you know, there are no instructions that came with the board, but I think uh, this switch here was to switch between serial and parallel. If you switch it to serial mode, then you're using these pins back here to control it. If you switch it to parallel mode, then you can use these first six switches as dip switches to set um, to set the attenuation manually. So six bits gives you 64 levels of attenuation. 
this last one I think is tied to the latch enable pin, which is also broken out down here. And that basically says, you know, um, take the bits that are either in the uh, serial shift register or on the dip switch and latch them into the chip and use that as the output to control the attenuation. Um, altogether, you know, this little board, it cost 20 bucks and it, it seemed to work uh, really good. Here is the uh, uh, breakout board that I built for the uh, SparkFun uh, RGB rotary encoder. You can see it's got the, uh, the encoder soldered there to the middle. I've also got two right angle uh, screw terminals that take uh, 440 screws. That way I can uh, drill some holes in the panel and I can uh, mount the board to the front of the panel that way. Uh, there's a whole bunch of resistors on the back here in my uh, my video where I described interfacing the uh, the RGB encoder. I used the 10K resistor for the uh, the button press as well as the two encoder outputs that go to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I also used a total of three resistors for the light, um, a 270 for the red, and a 150 and another 150 for the for the green and the blue. And then it's uh, broken out across the back here. I believe what the colors I used were uh, this uh, gray was uh, encoder A, the black is ground, the brown is encoder B, the yellow is 5 volt, the red, the green, and the blue are LED colors, red, green, and blue respectively, and the white is the push button. Okay, just a very quick uh, breakdown on how this thing is wired up. So there's the Raspberry Pi. That's our microcontroller running Linux. We have a vacuum fluorescent display and an encoder. They're each hooked up to the Raspberry Pi using a variety of uh, data lines. I've covered those in separate videos, so I'm not gonna talk about them in this video. Uh, the PE4302 on its breakout board, it has uh, a DC blocking capacitor on the RF input and a DC blocking capacitor on the RF output. And then it's got three IO pins that hook up to the Raspberry Pi. And in my, uh, my example, I hooked those up to GPIOs 2, 3, and 4. So this works uh, almost exactly like a uh, standard serial shift register. So it's got a latch, a clock, and a data pin. So you put your uh, data bit on the data pin, and then you uh, pulse the clock. That loads one bit into the shift register. When you put your next bit in the data pin, you pulse the clock again. You've loaded the next bit. You do this a total of six times and you will have all six data bits loaded into the shift register. And then you, uh, you toggle the latch pin and that will uh, latch the value that's in the shift register into the uh, output register of the attenuator chip and that will make your attenuation value live. So I've installed all the parts inside of this uh, project box that came from uh, Jameco Electronics. In here we can see the uh, Raspberry Pi, we can see the board with the PE4302 from uh, eBay. Down here is the board with the, uh, the encoder. Up here is vacuum fluorescent display and a couple BNC jacks. Um, the encoder mounts from these screws on the front so it's good and sturdy. There's a rectangular cutout I put in here for the, uh, the display. The two jacks. I cut the back out with ample room to hook up Ethernet and USB to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Ethernet is particularly handy if you're uh, if you're uh, developing the thing. And then over here, I cut a little notch out so we can put in uh, power. Okay, so now let's uh, try it out in practical application. I've uh, put everything together. I got out my uh, ICO three sixty nine. Uh, RF generator. Now I've connected the attenuator to the uh, marker oscillator so we can see the, uh, the marker oscillator's output on there. There's currently zero attenuation. Um, 1.35 volts or so and we can see as we step in the attenuator it steps the uh, waveform down. So there's a six decibels. We've got about half the signal, about 640 millivolts. 12 decibels should bring us down to about a quarter, about uh, 328 millivolts. 24 decibels brings us down to uh, about 75 millivolts. And uh, our top out here at 31 and a half uh, decibels of attenuation bringing us down to about 34 millivolts.
Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.